My guys. <laughs> it is finally, finally here. Our Sanctum survey two times drops events. I do believe it is going to be lasting for six days. And so hopefully the struggle for these heart shards, it is going to be quenched out of the entire patch notes. Fantastic news. However, with that being said, today we're going to be focusing on UEs as well as Ayumi herself. And so you guys already know the drill. We got to start off with the intro. Hi. Welcome back to another Princess Connect video. My name is Lace and today we're going to be talking about Ayumi as well as the UE. I think it's batch 5. So we've got Tomo, we've got Misato, Shiori, Aoi, as well as the lovely Iyo and Matsuri. Matsuri is actually, uh, it's actually pretty funny. So without further ado, let's start talking about Ayumi first actually. So we do have a new one star and she is... There are a lot of different things about her that I do want to cover because she is very much like a special case like Tsumuki or like the Yori where she is absolutely cracked if you're a whale or if you are not afraid of heavy investment. With that being said, let's just talk about Ayumi first. So this is Ayumi. Look at that cute little fairy looking lady as well as these ratchet little mole rats. Okay, let's move on to her skills. So essentially in a nutshell, she is a fantastic PvP unit. I think you guys probably got that idea when I compared her to like Tsumugi as well as Yori as well as like Matsuri. And so starting off with her UB, take courage and be in charge. Inflicts physical attack to all enemies in the front line and inflicts blind and confused to targets and that is a lot of status effects and that is ultra ultra annoying however after seeing the really cool blind and confused effects on the ub you start to realize hold up if they're blinded and confused then aren't they just going to miss each other when they hit each other and the answer is kind of yeah so it's kind of counterintuitive right so blind makes the enemies miss and confuse makes the enemies attack each other so it's like they're attacking each other but they're not hitting each other and so at best i would say consider this more as like a disable a stun disable rather than a blind or confused don't expect too much damage out of it is what i'm saying however the other thing to talk about for this one is the 1200 range on the ub and that is exceptionally long because I'm pretty sure that reaches H. Misaki, who is the furthest unit away. And so you can almost guarantee that although it says it inflicts the physical attack to all enemies in the front line, it is pretty much like, well, everybody is a front line. The world is an oyster kind of thing, you know? Okay, and so that is the UB covered off. Let's have a look at her skill one where she inflicts small physical damage to all enemies in range. And then for these enemies, she also grants a physical attack debuff, which is pretty nice because essentially I think you're starting to see the point of her kit it's to literally cripple everybody so if I remember correctly I I will stab you skill one is not going to be like 1200 range like compared to the UB I'm pretty sure it's going to be quite localized however as you guys can imagine this is going to be pretty annoying but there's not much left to be said about skill one so let's move on to skill two can I close my eyes so can I close my eyes inflicts small physical damage to all enemies in the front line and yes this is also going to have that cracked out 1200 range reaching all the way to the back so on top of the physical damage we're also going to be getting a stun on the targets for 2.4 seconds honestly and like that being on a skill 2 which means it's going into rotation you can see why Ayumi is so cracked out in PvP. Obviously, there isn't overly much like attack or offensive capability in Ayumi, but in terms of like defense and disruption, very much like your Tsumugi, although Tsumugi ends up killing people, she is certainly going to play a massive part in store comps if you are willing to build her. Because my guys, Ayumi herself, she is a one-star natural. So when you do get her, she is going to be looking like this. Generally speaking, when you're trying to cripple people, they work best on hidden defense MP arena, right? And so if you do insist on using Ayumi, I would recommend you go for two stars on her just to give her the extra little bit of bulk, especially because of the whole cleave meta and everything. And honestly, I don't know if two stars is enough, but it's probably going to be at least two stars or insta die. All right, so that is is her skill too and that's her utility very much arena focused disruption stun blind confuse physical attack down this is literally like it's so overloaded and so let's move on to the ex skill where she is going to get a medium increase to her own physical defense like honestly thank god because why is she getting physical attack and physical crit over here it is very obvious that she is very much a support right so you want to keep her alive as much as possible obviously these offensive stats don't help too much however my guys that is the hand that we have been dealt and so let's deal with it and so coming down to the attack pattern we have the attack down into the aoe stun the massive 1200 stun and then from here we actually have quite a long loop 
where the majority of the actions are actually in the auto attacks rather than the skills. So again, this is very much like some of our other units like Kasumi where they have longer loops, but they have really, really stacked skills. And so honestly, just for balancing reasons, I completely get why it has to look like this. Like imagine if this one was more frequent, like every three attacks or something, it'd be utterly cracked, right? The enemy team essentially can't move. That's yeah, that's what it would look like. All right, so I've covered off her skills. I've covered off like her utility, definitely in arena, probably on defense where you want to be hidden. If you really, really do want to use her again, at least two stars, potentially three, but for maximum efficiency, of course, it's going to be five stars. In terms of gear ranking, as always, check out Miss Nyara's sheet or check out Chocolate's sheet or Mars's sheet. I just prefer Mars's because it looks nice. And so as you can see, she is recommended to be geared at 11.6 or 12.5. And I probably probably would go with the 12-5 considering she is going to be like ultra ultra defenseless. However, honestly, I probably would just bench Ayumi until she gets added to the dungeon shop. Although that is quite far away. If you do like to use her, if you do like Ayumi, don't let me stop you, my guys. But otherwise, I completely agree with Mars's assessment here. You don't really want to be spending that massive amount of DA on Ayumi. All right, that said, my guys, let's get into the UE component, the unique equipment. Let's evaluate our new upcoming batch, the batch five. Okay, so to kick things off, we have Shiori over here. Craft high, level high, completely agree. Because if you look ahead, if you just take a small glimpse into the future and have a look at like the upcoming months and the team comps that they use, you are gonna quickly realize that Shiori is absolutely everywhere. Like right there, 541. I can scroll down a little bit. She's gonna show up for 441. Like over here, all over the place. She is actually just absolutely everywhere. And from a clan battle point of view, this trend continues on for quite a while. So Miss Nyara, so shout out again to Miss Nyara for this sheet over here. Miss Nyara's evaluation of craft height, level height is 100% on point. Now it kind of looks like I got ahead of myself because I didn't even explain what it does, right? So her UE, she is going to actually go from 135% damage to 235% damage on her skill one. And that's honestly really freaking massive. That's a 100% increase in the multiplier, it doesn't necessarily mean that she's going to be doing like double damage. On the other hand though, you can see over here, restores own TP by 139, which is 184 with the UE. And so as you guys know, Shiori's UB gets stronger every time she uses it. And so if she is getting more of this TP regeneration, combined with the TP boost that you can see down here from leveling up the UE, she's going to be getting off so many UBs. And so by the end of the fight, she's going to be firing off like millions and millions and millions of damage. And so honestly, there is not like a single bad part of her kit. She is going to be you being more often, she is going to be you being more often, and she's going to be you being more often, which ultimately leads to more damage, which is what we want in CB. However, with that said, let's move on. All right, so Miss Ator over here, we've got craft high and level low. However, let me not jump forward again and let's have a look at what exactly it does. So her skill one naturally buffs M attack by 550. With the UE, it triples going up to 100, no, sorry, 1,800 with M crit by 40. And honestly, that is like, that's really, really freaking good. However, I actually didn't see like overly many Misatos being used in CB. Like even with that really, really cracked out support skill, I think there is still a preference for five attackers, five magical attackers. So yeah, you do see Misato over here, like for 321, 321. However, look at that one over there. You got An instead doing 351. And so like, I would say she's actually at more of like a medium high craft. She certainly does pop up and is used for CB. However, the occurrence of Misato in CB is actually not that high as you just saw. And so yeah, I would settle with medium high, potentially even even sitting like over here. Though if you guys are using her for store comps, the HP boost plus eight going up to 23 at level 130, that is really, really freaking nice. I do completely agree with this statement, just overall very handy. Like Miss Sato is very, very handy. But with that being said, let's move on to Aoi over here, in which we are going to start getting into some really, really insane PVP meta. Okay, so to start things off, we are going from 150% all the way up to 485% if poisoned single target damage. But that's not the really cracked out part. Poisons 1575, UE 4125, or 30k if poisoned. Like, <laughs> just let that sink in. This freaking skill just went from 1575 
up to 30.8k if poisoned. Total damage in the course of 8 seconds with the UE 12 seconds and it ignores defense because as we know guys, poison actually goes through all defenses. And so yeah, that is exactly why Aoi is deleting any tank if not disrupted. It is honestly utterly insane and if you guys haven't figured it out by now, Stall is dead. Stall is like completely dead, especially with the release of Muimi. Now with Aoi, we're like really beating it with a stick. And so my guys, if you are a PvP player, I would highly, highly recommend I would boost this one to a high craft priority for Aoi. However, in regards to the scaling of the stats of the UE, like that's that's pretty crap to be honest. She's get oh actually she's getting defense, which she kind of needs considering she is like a backliner. Especially when you have threats like Halloween Miyako or Hatsune with the with her new UE, which she is going to snipe people with. I guess it's kind of okay, but at that point you would very much be using like a Kuka to taunt. You don't really want to deal with all of those threats with just Aoi by herself with some 38 defense. It's not going to work, guys. All right, so yeah, to summarize, high craft priority, certainly low level priority in my opinion. And unfortunately, I don't believe she is going to see overly much CB play, if at all. All right, and so with that being said, let's move on to Tomo, who is going to be getting a pretty nice increase to her skill one from 95% up to 135% to 195%, which scales with more targets. And so there is some context in terms of Tomo and like why she is good. I believe that she is a high craft priority because of this guy over here. Now, as you can see at the 15th CV, where we will be getting the pigs again, all bosses will be getting an accuracy increase up to 30, which means that dodge hopefully is not going to affect anything. So like if you guys remember the Kokoro dodges or the Kari dodges, and you don't get your Yubi in time, that should hopefully be fixed. However, the more important and more relevant update is going to be the multi-target update. So you can see that there are two pigs over here, right? And so what that means is that AOE damage is gonna hit twice on these pigs. And so if I come back over here to Tomo's skill, she is going to deal more damage as the targets increase. You already know what it is, man. She is going to be spanking both of those pigs individually. And so it is because of that multi-target update, which is coming in two CVs time, we just finished 13, that I would actually recommend you going for a high craft priority for Tomo if you are a CB player. Because even in the absence of these multi-target bosses, she is seen everywhere. She is going to be used for a very, very long time. Like if I scroll through, uh, where is Tomo? I swear guys, Tomo is actually, like she is used quite a fair bit. Like here, here, like as you can see over here, and we've got like, another one up there one down there for me i looked up like six to eight months in the future even looked up all the way to new year's kiaru and i found tomo there so yeah in the context of multi-target but also in the context of like well she's going to be used a lot so like your makoto and like your kari for those reasons i would say that she is a high craft priority and in terms of level attack 147 and crit going up to 447 and 179 with accuracy plus 10 i think it's okay but for me recently I've kind of been like, hey, I'm gonna just like not level my UE so much so that I can unlock some other people. And so whilst these stats are actually really fantastic, that is probably my approach. So medium level priority, I think is pretty appropriate. Okay, and so with Tomo out of the way, let's have a look at EO starting off with her skill one, going from 90% up to 135% for her UE. And so that's an extra 45% to the multiplier. However, the really nice part is actually over here. Charmed loses 399 TP. So what that means is that if the target is charmed and they are hit by this UE skill, that target is going to lose 399 TP. However, if the target is not charmed, then they are going to be getting an all attack debuff by 1000 for 12 seconds. So sorry guys, I didn't realize you couldn't see. That is that one over there, debuffs. It's all attack by 1000 for 12 seconds. Quite strong to be honest. And so you can see the scaling is going from attack. Holy moly, 634 attack, but 75 crit. Okay, I guess it does balance out. But the real fat juicer is the TP boost plus eight, going from three to eight. It's okay, it's quite decent. It's just not like crazy, crazy. Like Shiori over here, TP boost from eight going up to 23, man. That is insta max. Okay, so as most of us know, Eo is predominantly a PvP character. Like she is typically used for her turbo Eo or for the store comps. Very much for the defense, as Miss Nyara has said over here. Very strong disruptor, I think so as well. However, Miss Nyara goes on to say that you can still do without her, and I do agree with that. 
but EO on defense, like there are there are a lot of times that she's made me cry. So if you guys are PvP mains, I would actually highly recommend at least unlocking EO. So medium craft priority, I do agree. However, in terms of high leveling priority, I kind of disagree there. And obviously, my guys, like it's not like Miss Nyara has gotten it wrong. It's just that my priorities are different, right? Like what she says, it's very logical and it makes sense. And considering I'm using her spreadsheet and critiquing it like one way critique, she doesn't have a way to defend herself. So like guys, like Miss Nyara does a fantastic job. Anyway, so that's EO. So let's move on to Matsuri who is at a low craft priority, but a high level priority. Now, Matsuri is very, very interesting. And before I go into the UE and the evaluation, I do want to show you guys something else. And that is this guy over here. It's been 402 days since global launch. Scrolling down over here to shards in shop, you will see Matsuri appearing in the dungeon in 397 days after JP launch. It is a little bit past that for us, I believe five days over. And so my guys, what I am saying is start to expect the five star Matsuris with the UE. E. And if you guys have actually made it up to here without DAing Matsuri so far, don't DA her. Just wait for the dungeon shards. They are coming very, very soon. Okay, so that one out of the way. Let's come back to Matsuri and actually evaluate her. Skill 1, going from 35% up to 60% AOE damage, which is quite nice. But then the really, really nice part is actually coming after. After the stun. I mean, stunning them for 2 seconds, fantastic. However, uh, thank you for the follow, Master Shake 300 or the subscribe. With the UE, she actually gets a new effect where she buffs her own all defense by 224 for 12 seconds. And so let me get like an example for you guys. So for those of you who are not familiar with Matsuri, this is essentially what she does. With her UB, she is going to jump into the enemy team. So she is UBing here and she is going to jump in and I'm pretty sure she is going to stay there. And as you can see, she does not jump back. She is actually in there. She is doing the stuns. She is doing all of this disruption, just being a general menace. And so if she is tanking like five people at the same time, you can see why I am so excited about her getting all defense on her skill one UE. It just means that she can stay there way, way longer than she could before and just keep disrupting them with the stun for two seconds, etc., etc. Honestly, I think it's a fantastic UE. It's just that outside of this kind of utility, she doesn't really have that much utility. I would say from a PvP perspective, she would be a medium craft priority, especially because like she does enable some really interesting things like Mahiru UE. However, and kind of like in line with some of the other meme comps such as Mahiru, there just isn't overly much data in terms of Matsuri and how she fits in with the meta. And so my guys, if you do build her and end up using her, then like let us know what like kind of success you're seeing. However, with that being said, that's kind of it for this UE batch. It's actually quite a cool batch considering we are getting finally the Aoi UE as well as the Shiori and Eo. For me personally, I am unlocking and maxing Shiori UE. Like that is just a fantastic UE. I'll definitely unlock Aoi UE, but probably won't be leveling it at all. As for Tomo, I'm probably going to unlock it and then beg my clan leader to like, let me have those shards to not upgrade her. Because I do personally think that this thing over here, the unlock skill is already like, it's already fantastic. And then from there, I'll consider either Misato or Eo. Maybe I'll go back and like do Hatsune because I still don't have Hatsune. But yeah, that's kind of like my priorities in terms of UE. I think like you can probably vaguely follow it if you do have enough shards. And combining the new Sanctum two times as well as like the dungeon, which is giving us potentially sometimes some of these heart shards. Hopefully one day we will be able to unlock all of these unique equipments. However, for today, that is kind of it. And so that is when I'm I'm going to pass off the question to you guys. Which of these UEs are you going to be unlocking? Which of them looks interesting? The Matsuri is certainly interesting. Or are you going to follow closely to the meta? Potentially like craft this one, level it up, craft this one, don't level it up, stuff like that. Let me know my guys down in the comments below. And if you do end up leaving a comment, I would really appreciate that because it means that you've watched up until the end of the video. So thank you guys so much. If this video did end up helping you or you did enjoy it, please consider a like. And if you would like to see more, then please consider a subscribe. But otherwise, my guys as your girl Ayumi once said all good things must come to an end and so thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video bye bye